Happy Thursday, June 4th. Welcome to another exciting edition of Rate Desk. I am your host, Michael Thomas, here to talk about multifamily interest rates and other news. Going to the markets today, hey, the overall picture of the stock markets has been this continuing trend upwards. Um, you know, we get a bit of a mixed message on some of them on a, on a daily closing basis on the on the sessions, highs and lows, but overall, we really are seeing uh, a moves upwards. Um, in fact, Las Vegas is, is opening and has noticed there. So the markets are tending to be optimistic as, it, as to seeing the market reopen. Therefore, that's driving this, um, you know, run that we're seeing in the upward trend of the stock market today. Um, we are actually also seeing a continued run up in the crude oil futures. They broke into the $37 barrel range today on the futures of crude. That's nice to see that. I hope that trend does continue. Always good for, for us to, um, to have stability in the uh, oil and the energy markets. Going on over to the US 10 year treasury yield. Wow, what a move. Eight basis points, 0 0.08 up today. 75 uh, basis points yesterday. Today, 83.83. Man, it reminds me of the time when it was above 1%. Remember those days? Maybe we'll see them again, who knows? Big moves, though, on the US 10-year Treasury yield. Something to pay attention to, cause as you know, that US 10-year Treasury yield, you know, it really is an indicator for long-term uh, fixed rates. It's been a little bit of a funky time now, but as we continue to move forward, if you see that 10-year yield keep inching back up, we are gonna see mortgage rates continue to rise. That's just the historical pattern of it there. So keep an eye out on that. Jumping on over to the FHA rates, we are seeing a little bit of an uptick on the 223F. We're seeing that rate trade at 2.53 today. That is 253 fixed for 35 years. And the 40-year 221D4 financing, we are seeing that trade at about 318 today. 3.18, that's fixed for 40 years. Jumping on over to Fannie Mae Dust, 315 flat to yesterday, 10 year money. And Freddie Mac also flat at the 320, again, also on 10 year money. Now, what I want to speak with you about today, I was speaking with a correspondent lender earlier today about how his borrower should select his debt program. And my opinion on that is the business plan of the property. And if there's a family office, there's an estate plan, an inheritance plan, maybe a succession plan. All of those things should be taken into consideration before selecting the debt instrument for the property. Now, most of you might say, sure, I already know that, but you would be surprised because lenders can be very crafty with their marketing messages, how folks wanna jump on the bandwagon, this is especially true in affordable housing, by the way, of some hip, slick, new, cool product because it's exciting and it sounds great. And we all are kind of subject to that, right? QVC and the shopping networks are uh, an example of that. So you wanna be careful with that and not put the cart before the horse. In other words, you want your business plan for the property to match whatever debt instrument you then select. You don't wanna pick the debt and then try to squish your business plan to fit that. I've seen people try and that usually does not work out very well in the end. So that is my word of advice for today. Really think about that business plan. If you're a long-term holder and you are looking for interest rate security, then a program such as the agencies or really FHA is the best out there. If on the other hand, you are someone that is very uh, cash constrained at the moment, you don't wanna go into one of those loans, especially an FHA loan, because the transaction costs are higher. In fact, they're much higher. So you've gotta see that the end game matches your plan. It makes it worth it to go down the road that way. If again, you're a short-term holder, bank debt should be just fine, or credit unions, or even some of the smaller agency programs, they are lower in transaction costs, right? None of them are free, but they are a lot lower than some of the other bigger programs at GSEs and certainly HUD FHA. That's all I've got for today. Thank you all for tuning in to another edition of Rate Desk. I am your host, Michael Thomas, signing off.